This is a video to compare Bayesian and frequentist perspectives. So imagine there are two populations we might be sampling from. Population A has three fours and an eight. Population B has one four and three eights. So as a mnemonic, you can think the number four looks kind of like an A, the number eight looks kind of like a B, to remember which is which. And of course we don't observe the population. We can imagine, I'll shuffle them up a little bit over here, off camera. So you can imagine there's just a coin flip. If it's heads, we take pop, uh, if it's heads, we'll take, excuse me, this population. If it's tails, we'll take this population. It's tails, so we'll be sampling from this population. And we'll take one card and see which population we think it is. So I'll just take the top card here. It's an eight. So if we had to pick population A or population B, intuitively we should probably pick population B because it's the one that had more eights. And the Bayesian and the frequentist would both agree at a high level on population B, but the interpretation is very different. So the Bayesian would say, if since I'm seeing an eight here, and since we just flipped a coin to pick which population, so there's a 50% chance of each population to begin with, I now, having seen the eight, think there's a 75% chance this is population B, and I believe there's a 25% chance it's population A. So that's the posterior, is this belief about the different sort of subjective probability of each uh, population. In contrast, the frequentist, there's no belief that's being modeled. It's a statement about if there's a particular population, and I follow a certain procedure, how often will it be right? So for the frequentists, they would say, if I see an 8, I'll say it's population B. If I see a two, uh, 4, excuse me, I'll say it's population A. And then they would ask, given a particular population, how often is this correct? So if the true population is A, then 25% of the time we'll pick that 8 and we'll be wrong, whereas 75% of the time we'll draw a 4 and we'll be correct. Because we'll say A when it's 4 and we'll say B incorrectly when it's 8. If it's population B, then we'll see an 8 75% of the time, so we'll be correct 75% of the time. We'll see that 4 the other 25% of the time and be wrong in those cases. So you would say if we follow this procedure where we pick B when we see an 8 and A when we see a 4, we'll be correct 75% of the time regardless of which population we really are sampling from. So that's sort of a difference in interpretation between the uh, Bayesian and frequentist. Now one other difference, you can imagine instead of just flipping a coin and using that to pick the population, we have our two population A and population B Instead, it's your four-year-old child who's picking which population to give you. And naturally, the four-year-old really likes the number four and 
pretty much always, or at least almost always, chooses population A because of that. Now, we don't see explicitly that the four-year-old is choosing population A. We just see these four cards, and then we sample a card from that, and we need to try to decide which population we think we have. Now, if your four-year-old says, okay, here are the cards, and you sample, let's just say the top one again, and you see an eight, what will you think? There's two possibilities. One possibility is that this is population B, and there were three eights, and you picked one of the eights. Or, it could be population A, and you just happened to pick the one eight, and these are all fours. Now, knowing that your four-year-old was the one who picked, and that you're almost certain that it's population A, you would think it's much, much more likely that this is population A, and this is an eight, and that these are all fours, right? And the Bayesian analysis can incorporate that, what's called a prior belief. Um, in this case, it's a prior belief. Before you even turn over the card, you have a strong belief that this is population A. And then you can update that after you turn over the card, in other words, from what you see in the data. But in this case, even though you see an 8, you still think it's much, much more likely that these are all 4s, because your prior belief was so heavily weighted toward population A. Um, and the frequentist framework does not incorporate prior beliefs. It doesn't model beliefs in any sense. Um, again, it just says, okay, if this were population A, here's how often we'll be right, or if the for population B, here's how often we were right. Though the frequentist would say, I see an 8, so I will select population B, and I will be right 75% of the time if it's population B, um, and that same procedure would be wrong only 25% of the time it's population A, but the Bayesian is able to incorporate what is known about the four-year-old, and of course, since I set this up, it is indeed population A.